It's important to take notice this morning in Mark chapter number five that as soon as we begin, it says this, Jesus crossed over by boat and a great multitude gathered to him. It's important that we highlight this for just a moment because wherever Jesus is and wherever he went and wherever he goes, there are always crowds that are gathering around him. There are always groups and there are always masses of people that were present and always following him. But it never stopped Jesus from ministering to individuals. The groups and the crowds, the amount of people that are present, never stops Jesus from ministering to just one individual. I want somebody to be encouraged today. As you walk into a church, whether it's today, tomorrow, any other day of the week, it would be easy for the enemy to highlight that there are so many other needs, there are so many other people, there are so many other things that God can pay attention to. Why would he care about what you have going on? But today, I have come to remind you that even with groups, and even with crowds, the Lord, the God that you and I serve, he cares about each and every individual here this morning. I want you to be reminded that whether you just graduated or you've been in this life a long time, you and I serve a God that still knows your name, he still has your number, he still knows your address, he cares for you right where you are, there's nothing that you're going through that he is not aware of, there's nowhere that you walk that he has not already been, there is nothing that you will encounter that is too big or too strong for the God that you and I serve. I want somebody to be encouraged on this Sunday morning that though there may be a crowd, he cares about you. As he is making his way, you can imagine the groups of people, many people, many titles, many with reputations, many with needs, some rich, some poor, some famous, some not known at all. But here they are following Jesus. And the Bible allows us to follow along as Jairus comes through. He is a synagogue leader. He is, if you would, a campus pastor. His roles and responsibilities are around the synagogue. They are around the church. He has responsibilities that tend to the church. He knows religion. He knows law. He knows the word up to this point. He is aware. He is familiar with it. However, there is no one then and no one now that is ever too spiritual that is ever too knowledgeable, that is ever too familiar with the presence of Jesus and the word of God, that they do not need God. Somebody needs to hear me for just a moment because Jairus sets this perfect example. Though he walks around with titles, though he walks around with a reputation, though he walks around well known and no doubt gifted and no doubt with talent and ability, that is not what he presents to Jesus. When he makes his way to Jesus, he falls down at his feet he is begging earnestly. He comes in a posture of humility, understanding. I may have some things accomplished in my life, but there is nothing and there is no one like Jesus. There are some things that I have done in my life. However, I understand and I know what I am not. And though I've accumulated some things and though I've had some things throughout life and some experiences, Jesus, I know I'm not you. I'm not like you. I am in need of you. I want somebody to be reminded today that each and every one of us are to be in the posture of humility, in a posture of necessity and worship to God all. Almighty, I hope you accomplish great things. You'll still need him. I hope you carry titles uh, for your positions and your jobs, uh, but you'll still need him. I know you've been blessed, uh, but you'll still need him. I know you're well known and well respected, but you will always still need him. 
You nor I will ever get to the point uh, that we are anything absent of him. You or I will never get to the point that we can do this life uh, without him. Jarius understands this. Uh, I've been around the synagogue. Uh, I've been around the church a while. I sang the songs. Uh, I know how to clap on beat. Uh, I know the order of service. Uh, I know every usher's name and every greeter's smile. However, none of that means anything because I still need Jesus. I never will get to the point that I don't need them in my mind. I'll never get to the point that I don't need them in my life. I'll never get to the point that I don't need them in my home. I'll never get to the point that I don't need them in my situations. I'll never get to the point where I won't need him. I am always in need of Jesus. And I love the humility that he postures himself with. You don't think there were church people there? Jairus didn't care. But, I mean, you're the campus pastor, Jairus. Everybody knows you. You're supposed to have it all together. You're not supposed to have any flaws. You're not supposed to have any needs. If God's going to hear anybody, he'd hear you already. Why do you, have, what, what's the problem? He didn't care what anybody else thought. If I can say it, he walked in on Sunday. He walked in on Sunday. Love you, appreciate you, grateful, thankful for you. But your opinion is not going to change my posture. What you have to say is not going to change the need that is in my home today. So as much as I love you and as much as I respect you, the way that I think about God is not determined by your opinion or your thought. So excuse me, make some room. I need to get to him. Somebody needs to hear me this morning because whatever it is you're going through, don't ever think when you get to the church, you got to keep looking cute. You got to have it all together. Oh no, Jerry has understood this. There's, I'm wearing a suit, but there's some things in my life only he could do. There's some things I'm going through that only he can reach, only he can touch. You don't ever have to walk into the presence of God thinking, well, what, what, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? I've come to tell you everybody under this roof needs him. Everybody under this roof desires him. And when you come into the presence of the Lord, he sets this perfect example. He just falls at his feet. Falls at his feet. May I encourage somebody today that may be one of the things we have to alter in our life is our posture. We desire things from God. We need things from God. But yet our posture speaks a whole nother language. Nobody here, I'm sure, but probably just in my house, sometimes with my children, they'll ask for something and they've got an attitude. I know y'all never seen that before, but... It's in these new kids, you know what I mean? These nine and under ones. They want some, and, and you have to, as a parent, you have a role and a responsibility to teach them. You're not going to be perfect. You're not, you're gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna instruct them perfectly every time, but you have a role and a responsibility. And there's times when you try to correct them and say, no, 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 you need to say that again. You need to ask, you need to ask and have some manners. And you ever seen their posture? Can you just give it to me? I'm going to give you something else. A fruit snack, a fruit snack. Amen, amen. Their posture is disrespectful. You love them. You care for them. I want to spoil them. I want to give them what they desire and what they need and what they want. However, the lesson that they need to learn is a lot more valuable than what they are wanting me to purchase them. What they hear me, what they are wanting temporarily carries no weight or value in comparison to how they must approach this need and every other need in their life as they grow up. So hear me, sometimes the things that are not taking place in our life have to do with posture. Because this is what we do. God, will you just give it to me already? Won't even make eye contact. Won't even talk to him any other time but Sunday. Will you give it to me already? I'm, and you know what we do? I'm your child. 
You know what my son told me before when he wanted to shave dice? <laughs> well, don't you love me? <laughs> Hold on, you want a red, white, and blue shaved ice and you're going to throw my love into it? <laughs> don't you love me? Isn't, isn't that something how we do that to God? We'll, our posture will be so unaligned. We'll be like, well, God, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am your child. I'm a child of the king. I am a child of God. Oh, 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 oh. And God's like, your posture is terrible. Your posture is terrible. Can I, can I say that to somebody today? I, I'm not being rude. I'm not being harsh. I'm talking to all of us. Our posture is terrible. We come in, we come in and say, well, you know, God, you owe me this. You know what I mean? This is something that, like, I, I'm entitled to this. You know, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. I showed up to church before the countdown even started. I'm going to buy some baked goods to support the church. And God's like, no, your posture's wrong. Jerry, is, he comes in falling at Jesus' feet. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what anybody else wants. God, what I'm coming to you is letting you know, I know I'm nothing. I know I'm nobody. I know, I know you've been good to me. I know there's a title next to my name. There's some responsibilities that I have. But Lord, just so you know, I haven't forgot. This is where I belong. This is where I, I belong on my face. I belong on my knees. I, I understand and know that I am nothing without you. And so on this Sunday morning, Lord, I come before you because my daughter is at the point of dying. And it's you and you alone that can make a difference. Our posture needs to change. And as Jesus sees him, notice the power in this interaction here. Jairus knows if there is anyone that can heal my daughter, it is Jesus. So who does he go to? Jesus. Who are we turning to? Notice what happens. He goes to Jesus and he tells him, and he says this, would you come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live? And the very next verse, you can put it up there so they know it's the truth. Verse number 24, he asks Jesus to come to his house. And what does Jesus do? He agrees to go to his house. So Jesus went with him. I want somebody to be encouraged today. I don't know why you have been feeling like you're bothering God. I don't know why you feel like it's an interruption to who he is. But who do you think God wants you to turn to? Who do you think God wants you to lean on? The enemy been lying to you. God don't care. God isn't interested. God doesn't know. Yet when I look at scripture, I see a request made from a desperate man. And I see a response from a loving God. I don't know what need it is in your life. But can I tell you, God is mindful of it. Uh, that God wants to go home. Uh, hear me today. He said, will you come to my house? Uh, Jesus said, I'll go. I'll go. I wonder today, is there anybody that has some things at their house? Uh, is there anybody that has some things in their life? Uh, some things that are going on? I need Jesus to come to my house. And so Jesus went with him. It wasn't complicated. There wasn't, there, he didn't have to sign a waiver. He said, Jesus, would you come? James, would you come to my house? And Jesus went with him. As elementary as it sounds, though there are no angels' wings flapping in this moment, can I tell you, Jesus will go where he is invited, and Jesus will stay where he is welcomed. Somebody needs to hear me today. I don't got it all together. Jesus will go where he is invited and he will stay where he is welcomed. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Situations are in my life. There's tough times. There's trouble. Jesus will go. Well, who are you inviting? Who is it that you are inviting today? Because he's ready and he's willing. 
And the Bible says that Jesus goes with them. And as he is making his way, I'll move through this quickly, but as he is making his way, there is a woman that has an issue of blood 12 years. She could not stop bleeding. She had gone through every doctor's appointment. She had seen everyone. And the Bible says that she is now worse off than she was when it first began. And she says to herself, if I can just touch Jesus, I will be made, I will be made whole. I will be healed. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just get and if I could just get by, and the Bible shows and tells us that as Jesus is making his way to Jairus' house, as he is on his way, this precious woman without a name is making her way, and she reaches out, and she literally touches Jesus, and she stops him. No name, no reputation, no accolades. Nobody in the crowd said that they knew her. Nobody thought she was special. Mark doesn't even give her a name. But she has the power to stop Jesus. Can I again remind you, as I did just a few minutes ago in the opening, that even though there's a crowd, he cares for the individual. And that you may feel like, I don't have this and I don't have that and no one knows this and no one knows that. Jesus is literally stopped by a woman that simply has a desire and faith to touch him, to get a hold of him. And it's there in that moment that he stops and he tells his disciples, who touched me? And they're there and saying, well, who, what do you mean who touched you? There's all these people. No, somebody touched me. And she's with fear and trembling. And she says, it, 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 it was me. It was me. And Jesus looks at her in front of everybody. He said, let's just make this public. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. I know Mark isn't going to give you a name, but baby, let me give you a title. You are now my daughter. You are now my, I know nobody else knows your name and nobody else seemed to care about you. And I know you've been going through some tough times, but just so you know, I look at you differently. I look at you with a relationship. You are my daughter. Daughter, your faith has made you whole because he cares for the individual in the middle of the crowd. And as amazing as it is, as awesome as, as we should clap to that, as we should rejoice with that, may I present to you a different perspective, the perspective of the father that is waiting for a healer. This is urgent. It's a matter of emergency. My daughter was dying when I left. I can only imagine how bad it is right now. And God, I know you love everybody. And I know you want to do something in everybody's life. But as I'm here and you're there talking to this woman with an issue of blood, my need is fading away. My daughter, her pulse is weaker by the second. And the perspective is one today that must have faith that can wait. When you're praying and you're believing, and you're obedient, and you're worshiping, and you're in the posture of humility, and you're in the posture of worship, but the answer hasn't come yet. But the healing hasn't arrived. But the word with power and grace and victory has not been present. Do you have faith that will wait? Because that's where it's tested. I had faith when Jesus said, I'll go with you. Can you imagine how Jarius felt in that moment, Alice? He got excited. He clapped his hands, said, let's go. We're going, to, we're going home. She's going to be healed. Jesus is on the way. And then a crowd stops him. I don't have time for this. Do you not realize my need? I'm preaching to somebody right here in this spot. Do you not know, God, I've been praying this for a while I've been believing this for a minute now. I had moments where it looked like it was going to happen. We were on our way, but then it didn't happen. I had times where I felt so much faith and I felt like it was going to happen, but why am I still just waiting in the crowd like everybody else when you already, you already spoke something into my life and it hasn't happened yet? Somebody right now is waiting and your faith is being tested. 
And I've come to tell you today, it's in that moment that your faith is not only being tested, but it's being strengthened. At times of testing, we only choose to acknowledge the test as a problem, as an issue, as a dilemma. But if we would take the approach and see it from a perspective on the other side, we wouldn't see dilemma and problem and issue. What we would see is strength. Hear me. What we would see is a growing strength and understanding. I don't know some things until I've been through some things. Very basic, very elementary. We understand that. Well, it is the same thing spiritually. If God did it automatically, then we would never know what it is to wait for it. And God here in this moment has already told you, I'm going to your house. I'm going to meet that need. But while he is waiting, he gets news that the need that you came to Jesus with just got worse. I feel like my faith is trying to, trying to get stronger, but at the same time, you're giving me news that kills it. But notice what Jesus says. This is what the Bible says. That as Jesus was speaking, as he is speaking, right here in verse number 35, if we can put that up, Haley. Verse number 35, same chapter. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Notice who are they talking to? Say that, Jairus. The people that are coming, they are talking to Jairus. They, this is what they say. Your daughter is dead. I am so sorry. But she's gone. And then they add this to it. Why bother the teacher anymore? When the most difficult season of your life has started, it has now been confirmed. Your greatest joy, your greatest passion, your greatest love is no longer breathing. The pain, the instant moment, that moment that he felt and instantly that pain and that grief. What do you mean? We were on our way. We were making our way there. What do you mean she's gone? But notice what Jesus says. And I want to say this and I say it respectfully. They weren't even talking to Jesus. They weren't even talking to Jesus. We saw this together. They were talking to Jairus. They said, hey, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said. I want somebody to get this today overhearing what they said, Jesus tells him, don't be afraid, just believe. Hear me today. You've got situations, I feel this this morning. You've got situations and you've got people and you've got circumstances that are in your ear. It's over, bro. It's over, sis. There's no way, mama. There's no way, dad. There's no way, husband. There's no way, wife. There's no way. It's over. It's done. Why bother Jesus anymore? Jairus doesn't even have the ability to respond. And Jesus steps in overhearing what they said. And can I tell you today with faith and confidence the same God that could overhear what those people told Jarius is the same God that steps into your life and says, I heard that. Don't even say anything. Let me, let me have a response. Let me tell them, Alex. Let me talk to them, Jared. Let me let them know. I heard what they said. I know they said it's over. I know they said it's done, Gia. But I got something to say. I got something to let them know that I've heard it all and I'm not done working. Somebody needs to get a hold of this today. Can I say it to you like this? God is listening to what everybody's telling you. Hear me. 
Hear me, God is listening to what everybody's telling you. You mean every lie the enemy's trying to tell you? Yep. You mean every, every person of doubt? Yep. You mean every insecurity? Yep. You mean every challenge? Yep. When that thing is whispering in your ear, you don't have what it takes. Get real. You really think you're going to make it? What makes you think you can get, do it this time? What? Come on now. You've been here before. You've hit this wall before. She's dead. It's gone. It's over. There's no breath. There's no pulse. Just let it go. Why bother? Why bother? Because Jesus steps in and says, oh, uh, no, no, you, you must be confused. You're not a bother. Oh, no, no, no. I know, I know what you've been encountering, Cindy. I know what you've been going through, Vinny. You're not a bother. You're not a bother. Don't, 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 don't talk to the master about it. Just let it be what it is. Uh, hey, it's just something you got to deal with. Uh, it's just what life has handed to you. Oh, no. God said, no, no, no. You're not a bother. I've heard everything they said. I've heard everything. that I heard all the facts. Uh, I know all the feelings. Uh, I am well aware. But just so you know, don't be afraid. Just believe. That's the word for somebody today. I've heard everything there is. Sister Barb. Don't be afraid. Just believe. But it's lifeless. Don't be afraid. Just believe. What happens, if we can paint just a picture very quickly, is we come with a little bit of faith and we hold hands with fear and doubt. Say, all right, God, I'm here. I believe. I believe. But I also brought fear. I also brought doubt. <laughs> I just don't know how this is going to work out. So I, I got a little bit of faith, but also, I, I, also got some, I also got some fear. God says, do not be afraid. I don't need your fear. Just believe. That's what I'm going to work with. He is aware of the situation. I move quickly. He is aware of the circumstance, but it is him, it is Jairus, and the three disciples that are with him, Peter, James, and John, and they are making their way there. And as they are making their way there, Jesus comes in, and I won't be much longer. He begins to hear the noise. He begins to hear the noise. He begins to hear the people crying. He begins to hear the people murmuring and talking, and oh, it's over, and how sad it is, and all the hired mourners are there, and it's there, and I can see, and I can just picture it as he's making his way he's telling Jairus do not be afraid just believe do not be afraid just believe and I, I can almost hear this is in my, my mind's eye if you would I can see Peter there I, I can see I, I can see Peter James and John but the Jeremiah's they're making their way they've heard everything they know the daughter's dead but I can just hear him. you hear that what is it even when I don't see it you're working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. Even, I may not see it right now, but God's doing something. Jairus is there, and Jesus is making his way with confidence. Jairus is just there behind him, stunned and shocked. And Peter and James and John are just, I know the master. I know I, we, don't, we don't got it in us. I just know how he rolls. I, I just know how he operates. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't understand it, you're moving. You're working. I don't understand it. I don't know how it's going to work, but I've seen him. I, I know what he can do. I, I know the power that he has. I, I know what he possesses. I know what it looks. I can hear them cry, but just, just because I can hear them cry doesn't mean I can't hear them singing. Even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't see it you're working somebody needs to take a hold of it on this Sunday morning for whatever it is you're going through I know I'm walking to difficulty but even though I don't see it you're working even though I don't know what's happening you're working you're moving you're doing what only you can do somebody get a hold of it because to Jesus you're not a bother. He walks up into the house. People are crying. You can stand with me if you like. People are crying and people are there. And he says, what are you crying for? She's just asleep. They waste no time. Who do you think you are? She's dead. She's been dead. They laugh at him. And Jesus makes and teaches this valuable lesson inside of Jairus' home. Everybody get out. 
Hear me. Everybody get out. I don't need anybody here that doesn't believe. I don't hear me. I don't need anybody in my home that isn't going to have faith. I don't need hear me. This may sound harsh to somebody, but do you want your daughter to live or not? This may sound harsh, but do you need the miracle or not? When you walk up into that house, Jesus says, everybody get out. He didn't care about your feelings. If you got doubt, you got unbelief. I don't need you here. I got the disciples. I got mom and I got dad. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to show you the power that is in Jesus Christ. That's it. Let me say it to you kindly today. There are some things that you just got to walk back into your house and say, time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Gotta go. I don't know what it is. That's between you and your home. I don't know what it is that you're entertaining at home. I don't know what it is that you're saying at home. I don't know what it is that you're looking at at home. I don't know, I don't know what it is that you're entertaining and playing with in your home. But it's time you go back and say, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. The only thing I'm bringing in here is faith. The only thing I'm bringing in here is my belief and my trust in God. The only thing that I'm walking in with is an understanding that my God can because I'm not a bother to him I'm the apple of his eye I'm not a bother to him he looks out for me I'm not interrupting him I am what he's focused on Jesus kicks everybody else out everybody gets out of the room all right, you can imagine all the people that were paid to cry hold on I didn't even get my check yet Kicking me out, they're like, oh, 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 hold on, you gonna pay me? Get out, get out. We, we don't need your tears here anymore. We don't need your words here anymore. And the Bible says that Jesus takes the mother and the father, crushed, no doubt. Crush, no doubt, but Jerry is present with enough faith. Just present. I went to Jesus and I asked if he would come to my house. And he did. And now he's standing right here in this room, in my daughter's bedroom. We are here and here Jesus is. And he reaches over to pray for that precious baby girl, that 12-year-old young lady that is there. After they ridiculed him, this is what the Bible says. He took the father and the mother in verse number 40. Took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him, his disciples, the three disciples, and entered where the child was laying. And he took the child by the hand. Oh. It's not my business. It's not my business today what it is in your home. But I feel that precious, that precious hand of the Lord reaching out. Grab a hold of that hand. So I walked into your home. Oh, my home, I've got struggle. My home, I got problems. My home, I got dysfunction. My home, there's some things I'm not proud of. My home, I, I don't want everybody to see all that. But Jesus came in to where that problem was laying. He didn't just come to speak. Now you got to understand this. This Jesus that we're preaching about. Everybody else would expect him to live up to a certain amount of laws, to certain laws. You can't touch dead things. You can't touch dead things. But what we see in Mark chapter number 5, Jesus had no problem speaking to the demoniac. He had no problem. Can I tell you, while he was on his way, he was touched by a woman with an issue of blood. Let me tell you, that made him unclean. She wasn't allowed to touch anybody. She was unclean. But that would make him unclean. Did it stop him? Oh, no. He stopped for her. And now he is here. Everybody in the room is about a witness. You're not supposed to touch dead things. Watch me. There's been no post in that for a while. Watch me. What? What about the laws? What, 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 about, what about ceremony? What about? So 
So what about compassion? What about love? What about my feelings towards my people? And yeah, I'm aware of what everybody else says. But I'm reaching my hand out on this Sunday morning because I need you to know you're not a bother. Jairus, I've been waiting for people to invite me to their home. You were the one that had enough faith to ask me to come home. Everybody else, they were there. Will you heal me? Will you do this? Will you do that? And Jerry, he said, would you come to my home? Would you heal my daughter in my home? I've been waiting for that because, Jerry, I want you to understand and you're going to help me teach a lesson that you're not a bother. You're my daughter. You're my son. You are the one I love. You are the one I listen to. Not only do I listen to your words, but, Alex, I listen to the words that people speak about you because you're not a bother. And on this Sunday morning, all walks of life, all different struggle, all different battle, all different victories, all different defeats, we are present today with the God that has walked in this room. And he reaches his hand out because you're not a bother. And I ask